Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought it's time that since we talked about doing some basic titles inside of the title tool, let's look at doing some basic titles inside of Marquee. Now, Marquee is a fantastic title creation application that used to be its own standalone application that required dedicated hardware to create some very cool titles. Well now, with the power of computing today, we don't need a separate workstation. We actually have access to Marquee right from within Media Composer and Symphony, and it's a fantastic tool that I find a lot of editors shy away from. But once you start to see the power of Marquee, I guarantee you, you're going to be going back to it again and again. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony, and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt-Tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously a Command-Tab for all my Mac friends out there, and there's something important that we make sure that we have set properly first before we get into Marquee. What we're going to do is navigate to our settings. You'll remember when we talked about settings a long, long time ago, we did talk about a setting down here called, appropriately enough, Marquee Title. What I'm going to do is double-click on it, and I'm just going to make sure that when I create a new title, that I'm asked which title tool that I want to use because if I have one of these set to one or the other, for example, if I have it set to the standard title tool, Marquee will never open. There's no way for me to get in and launch it from within Media Composer or Symphony without having Ask Me selected. Now you'll see right below that I can also promote a title tool to Marquee, Yes, No, or Ask Me. Now what does that mean? Well that means that if I've created a standard title and I want to get in and update that title, if I have this set to yes to promote title to marquee, when I need to get in and make a change to that, it's automatically going to open marquee and make that change. Now, obviously marquee takes a little bit longer to open than the standard title tool, and there's a whole bunch of different features inside there that once you promote it, you cannot go back. So in most cases, I leave this to be ask me or I set it to no, because if I create something with the standard title tool, I'm going to be leaving it the standard title tool and if I create it with Marquee, I'm going to want to update it with Marquee. I normally keep both of those completely separate of each other. So I'm just going to leave Ask Me selected for both of them. I'm going to say OK. And what we're going to do now is I'll just switch back to my bin view here. I'm going to navigate up to Clip. I'm going to come down to New Title. What's going to happen is Symphony is going to take a second. Then, of course, I will be prompted, just like I had just said inside my settings, to use the Marquee or the Standard Title Tool. Now remember, don't click Persist, because if you do, once you select either of these, it's going to default to that inside that setting I just showed you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Marquee, and you're going to see now this whole new interface has now opened up. Now, you remember I said in the introduction, Marquee used to be its own standalone application on a completely separate workstation. Now, it's been integrated into Media Composer and Symphony. So it opens up right from there, and you'll see that I can still actually switch back by hitting Alt and Tab on Windows, Command and Tab on the Mac. You'll see Marquee is its own separate application. I can actually go back to Symphony here, and I could work if I wanted to. Now, one thing I am going to do here before we go on is I'm just going to get some footage here. Maybe we'll just get some motocross footage here. Why not? Because we just happen to have it available here. And I'm just going to create a new sequence, and I'm just going to stick one shot in here. Maybe I'll find a bit of a better shot here, a daylight shot. That's actually not even too bad here. There we go. Very cool. Just drop that into a timeline inside of sequences. Now let's go back into Marquee here. We're going to say Clip, New Title. I will promote this to Marquee. And you'll see now that I have that footage behind or the footage behind the title that I'm going to be creating. Now, the first thing I normally always do is I always turn my safe grids on because safe grids are an exceptionally important thing to remember to turn on when you're working in any titling application. And you'll find it right up here along the top bar. We're going to get into what all of these are in just a second. But you'll see right over here I have my safe title, safe action. I can turn that on and right beside that I have my grid. If I wanted a grid, you'll see all the dots appear for the grid. And last but certainly not least, I of course have the background image. If I want to see the background image, I'm going to want to make sure that I have that selected. So let's talk a little bit more about what we have going along along the top bar here. Now before I do that, I'm actually going to create a title. And that's going to require us to come over here to the toolbar. Now the first option, fairly self-explanatory, it is the arrow tool right here. You'll see that I can take this tool. It's also com commonly referred to as the, the edit tool inside a marquee. But what we're predominantly going to be using this for is selecting things. Now, let's select a text tool. And I'm just going to type in BMXing, as I always do. So there's BMXing. Of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to use 
my favorite font, Impact. So I'm just simply going to select all of this text by hitting Control and A on the keyboard, Command and A for all my Mac friends out there. And let's come up here to the text selection drop down or the font selection drop down. Of course, again, I'm just going to type in Impact. There we go. And there is Impact, uh, BMXing typed out in Impact. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up to the selection tool or the edit tool here. And you'll see that as soon as I do that, I now have bounding boxes around each one of the uh, text icons inside of this BMX. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click somewhere else, and I'm going to get back to that in just a second. Once I click somewhere else and I click back on the text, I'm now ready to take it and position it wherever I want. So what I'm going to do is you'll see, though, if I did bring it over here, as soon as I get close to that title, the safe title, it actually snaps to it, which is always very handy because I normally like to snap things right to the edge of safe title. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stretch the bounding box all the way out and I'm going to stretch it down a little bit here. Now, the only reason I'd want to stretch things down is if I had, you know, a longer text sentence that I would want to break into a couple lines. BMXing is just one line, so I don't really need to do this, but it's sort of a force of habit thing for me. So what I want to do is I want to take BMXing and I want to increase the size of it. And that's done right up here, obviously, with the text size uh, option right here. Now, a couple ways that we can get in and we can adjust the size of the font. Now, you're going to see that as soon as I bring the mouse over top of it, right down here in the lower left-hand corner of the actual title creation window, you'll see that as I come up here and I hover over top of it, it tells me that this changes the selected text to use this font size. So I can get in and I can actually punch it in manually. Let's say I want it to be 90 point size. Let's do that again here. Let's try this again here. It doesn't seem to like 9 on my keyboard for some reason. We'll do 50. There we go. It's even smaller. But normally this is not how I do things. I'll just punch in 120 here. There we go. Normally what I like to do is I like to do it the grab and drag method. So what I can do is I can actually navigate right over here over top of the up and down arrows. And you'll see that by doing that, I can, I'll just come back up here again, I can change the selected text to use this font size again. But what I can do now is just drag it and increase the size of it like such. A very handy way to work. And you'll see that the bounding box, because I only have one line of text, the bottom part of the bounding box doesn't impact anything with the text. But what would happen here is if I got it big enough, you'll see it actually stretches outside of the bounding box, which I'm not going to want to do. I'm going to want to get it to right about there. I think that's pretty good. And I'll just bring the bounding box down to make things kind of even. I think that's pretty good right there. You'll see I can obviously, again, adjust the positioning however I want by simply grabbing the text, moving it wherever I desire, just like such. It snaps to my saves here, which is always cool. And what I actually also like is the fact that if I drag this text over to save picture, you would think that it would snap to it, but it doesn't. It only snaps the text to the edge of safe title, not to the edge of safe picture. A very cool little sort of thought that they had put into this when doing this, because in most cases, you're not going to be going outside of safe title to be doing any titling work. Okay, so we got our text nice and big. Now, what if I wanted to get in and adjust the kerning between the text? No problem. As we move down the line here from the text size, we come to the next option, which is to obviously change the kerning of the selected text. Now, again, I could punch in a value if I wanted to, but why would I do that when I can simply just grab and drag? Now, you'll see that everything is anchored to that B. Now, why would that be? Well, that's because I have the text left justified. I'm just going to undo what I just did by hitting Control and Z on the keyboard. Command and Z for all my Mac friends out there. Now, I am Canadian, so I do say Z. I still do use the Queen's English. Um, now, for all my American friends, that would be uh, Control and Z, Command and Z there. Uh, you'll see that if I justify things center, you'll see the text adjusts a little bit inside the bounding box. And now, if I adjust the kerning, it's centered right in the middle of the text. Now this is obviously a preference for you if you want to have your text left, center, or right justified. But in most cases, I have my text center justified, so that way I can quickly get in and do things like such. Now obviously, what we can also do here, if I switch back to the text tool, is I can select uh, in between any of the text here. I can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac. I can use the left and right arrow keys to adjust the kerning manually if I wanted to, just like such. So we'll have that option as well. Very cool. There we go. Okay, so let's come back here. Let's select our text. Because as we move down the chain here from kerning, we now have obviously the text color. We can obviously get in, select whatever color text we want, or we can even come down, choose the color picker here. Let's do that again here. 
choose the color picker, pick whatever color we want. Maybe we want it to be the blue or sort of purpley color of this bike. Let it go, and there we go. We're all set to go. So that pretty much takes care of the top bar here in creating a basic title. Now we do have a few more options over here on the left hand side, some of which I'm going to get into in this tutorial, but some I'm going to save for the next tutorial because it's actually going to relate to another very cool feature inside of Marquee that I'm not going to talk about. I'm going to tease it for the next one. So we talked about the text tool and how we can obviously use that to get in and type text. And what we can also do here that's also very cool is we can come down and I can actually get in and I can adjust the rotation of the text. I know you're probably thinking to yourself with the rotation of the text, what, you can just sort of spin it in a circle? Well, you'll see as soon as I click on the rotation tool, what happens is, is that I now get this very interesting crosshairs that's appeared. It's yellow up here, it's green in the middle, and it's blue on this side. And as I move the mouse over top of it, you're going to see that I get a different icon. I get the up and down, left and right arrows. Well, that's kind of very interesting. I wonder what this exactly does. Well, you'll see that if I come over here, and I come over the blue line, I get that up and down, left and right uh, crosshairs. If I click and I drag, I can actually rotate this text in 3D space like such. Very nice. Oh yeah, and of course, once I get the text over here, if I wanted to rotate it forward, I can do that as well. And I can rotate it back as well. So you'll see we have an unbelievable amount of flexibility inside of the Marquee Title Tool that we never had inside of the Standard Title Tool. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you a couple more things inside our toolbar here. And what I'm going to do to do that is I'm just going to delete the BMX scene because what I can do now is I can actually come in and I have a pen tool and I can actually get in and I can draw any type of shape that I might want just like such inside a marquee. And of course, once I have it drawn, what I can do is I can also get in and I can adjust the color to whatever I want. And I can get in and I can add shadows that we're going to get into in the next tutorial. But you can see, we can get in, we can draw shapes. What we can also do is if we don't, don't want to get in and draw our own shape, what we can do here is simply come in, we can create uniform shapes like rectangles, like squares. You'll see what I can do is hold shift to create a perfect square. I can do the exact same thing with the circle tool. What I can do is I can create an ellipse like such, or I can hold shift and create a perfect circle. So you see, we do have not only the flexibility, we have this feature of creating the uh, circles and squares inside of the standard title tool, but suddenly now we've opened up this world to create our very own shapes, whatever type of shape we want to create using the pen tool inside of Marquee. So you'll see, getting in, we can create simple basic text, and then we can start to take it to the next level by getting in and rotating that text. And what I also want to do, before I wrap things up, is I want to show you something else that's kind of interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these uh, elements here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to undo everything I just did here, and I'm going to get back that BMXing title that I had. There we go. Very cool. Now you're going to notice that as I adjusted this, and maybe you didn't notice this, that down here in the transform properties, I started to get adjustments for rotation as I actually got in and I rotated things. So what I'm going to do is just rotate and you're going to see that as soon as I stop, what happens is that the rotation values have now changed. This is actually very handy because what happens is that if I rotate this, let's just get in and do some crazy rotation here. I'm like, you know what? It's not really working for me. Okay, well, what do I do? Oh, well, that's great. I can actually right click and I can say reset rotation. Or what I can do is I can simply, if I'm down here near the transform properties, just simply punch in values of zero and reset everything back to normal. So you'll see, again, multiple ways to do the same thing. Right click and say reset rotation, or in this case, reset anchor point, or I can just come down to the transform properties and just punch in really any value I want. If I want to set the rotation of the X to be, you know, let's just say 15, just punch in 1, 5 here. Let's just make sure we actually punch it before the decimal point. And we can also punch in a rotation of, let's just say, 45 degrees. There we go. Very precise control over that. But what I wanted to show you here, I'm just going to undo that here, is I'm going to come back up to the text tool, and I'm going to select one, uh, one letter, the letter M. And what the client said to me is that our logo is actually, you know, let's actually select a few of them. Let's select uh, M-X-I-N, because I've seen this all the time, and you'll see this in Hollywood trailers, where you'll get the first letter of something to be big, the next letters to be small, and maybe the last letter to be big again. And in most cases, I always see people getting in and, you know, adjusting things letter by letter, but you don't need to do that inside a marquee. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select the text that I want to adjust, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to grab it and drag it like this. Very cool. Very quick to do. 
But there's something else that I can do as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to select one letter. Let's just select the letter M here. And I'm going to come back and do what I did before by switching back to the Edit Tool, or as I like to call it, the Selection Tool. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to see that I now have a bounding box around just M. Well, what I can do now is I can actually get in and I can adjust the scale of just M. And I can even get in and adjust the rotation of just M if I wanted to. So you'll see, not only do we have control over the entire uh, text element that you've created, you can also get in and make finite adjustments to the individual characters in your text very quickly and very easily by simply selecting it and getting in and adjusting it however you like. So I hope this introductory tutorial, and we've really only just scratched the absolute surface of Marquee, has shown you what a fantastic tool it is for creating titles and why, after you've started to use Marquee for a little bit, you're probably never going to go back to the standard title tool again. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.